Hi everyone, Ali here. We spend a considerable time of our lives immersed in digital world, the world of screens. A friend of mine asked me to tell some of my favorite activities that do not involve any kind of screen, and I had a hard time answering his question. Such is our lifestyle, but what we see on the screen is just the surface, and there's a lot going on under the covers, or should we say, behind the screen. In these two-part videos, we shall cover many of the important concepts, technologies, and issues involved in display ecosystem. Note there is a lot of depth in this area, so keep your expectations straight. The video will introduce you to the essential concepts of the display ecosystem only, as each concept can have its own playlist. It's made for general audience, but some detail would be included to aid developers, especially web developers. We shall start with the imperceptible thing that you forgot about, that exist between your eyes and my video, the screen. There are a host of terms associated with screens and I'll discuss some relevant ones. First and foremost is the screen size or display size. That size can be physically measured by a ruler and is usually described in inches. The size always means the diagonal from corner to opposite corner like top left to bottom right, also known as display size. Screens are generally rectangular shaped and their height and width is generally close to but almost never equal to the famous golden ratio which is supposed to be the ratio loved by humans the most. The ratio is 1.618. This is a generally perceived notion but in practice anything closer to it would do. The proper word for the ratio in practice is aspect ratio. So most famous aspect ratios are 4 is to 3 and 16 to 9 where former was insanely popular in days of CRT monitors and films, but with advent of widescreen TVs followed by widescreen display monitors, its popularity quickly sank in favor of later. Then came 1610 that ruled the market in 2000s for the entire first decade. The reason was simple as 1610 is almost the golden ratio. As popular as it was, it ceased to be within a span of one to two years in favor of 169 with the primary reason being manufacturing cost, as this is a compromise ratio where limits of CRT monitors, that is how much they can stretch in width, meets the widescreen 1610 format, with neither of them not losing all that much. For widescreen manufacturers, it saved them in cost of glass per equipment, so it was a win-win for everyone and quickly took over as a general standard. Talking in general terms, this is a ratio which provides the same screen for widest and narrowest common formats. That's enough history of aspect ratios. Let's move to the related topic of screen resolution. The display resolution or display modes of a digital television, computer monitor, or display device is the number of distinct pixels in each dimension that can be displayed, where pixel is the smallest addressable element or unit. Display resolution is usually read as the number of pixels in width multiplied by number of pixels in height. There is even a shorthand which you might be familiar with that is only the number of pixels in height followed by P or I, for example, 720p, 1080i, or 1080p, and implicitly means the same thing. I or P refer to interlaced or progressive scan, which I'll defer talking about at this time. They are generally known as native or intrinsic resolutions of the screen as well. In early devices like color CRT monitors, those with good eyesights could even see the individual pixels on screen as a combination of three red, green, and blue lines repeating endlessly. Well, not endlessly, but to a finite number of rows and columns. When we say addressable unit, it means each RGB pair can be individually identified by row and column index and its brightness controlled and thus color manipulated individually for each pixel. Pixels do not always refer to physical entities on the screen. Logical pixels also exist, which help content developers use the term as a reference size. They refer to a fixed reference length rather than a true pixel on screen. As an example, a CSS pixel is defined as 196th of an inch. While this might work for printing, a real pixel count per logical pixel is calculated on several factors like viewing distance, torus per inch of the display device, and size of device, etc. That's the limit of discussion on this topic. Display resolution is just one of the so many resolutions that exist around. In the digital world, the term resolution takes a lot of context. Your digital camera, for example, has a fixed or configurable native resolution in which it would capture and save the image. 
Note the capture resolution of sensor may be different from the resolution in which camera can save information. And there are a lot of other things involved, including pixel size, processing software, compression applied, etc. Two cameras with same resolution might yield different quality output. Resolution is just one factor in determining image quality. The saved image has so-called image resolution and an associated property called pixel count, which describes how many individual pixels make up the digital representation of the original natural object. Your digital handheld camera or the phone camera refer to the maximum pixel count it can use to capture images. Does the term 2 megapixels sound familiar? It can be rephrased as 2 million pixels or 1920 cross 1080p or 1920 horizontal and 1020 vertical pixels making a grid with total 2.07 million pixels or 2 megapixels for short. Stating the obvious, the more pixels used to represent an image, the closer the result to natural object or scene the image represents and more the detail. More pixels help capture more detail. The resulting pixel-based image is called bitmapped image or raster image, where just like display screen, the image is a grid of pixels and each pixel can be addressed individually. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in early CRT monitors, you could see each pixel as a set of red, green, and blue lines on the screen. Here we must discuss another important property that is color depth. Red, green, and blue are primary colors and their combination can virtually produce all perceivable colors. So your color camera captures three color values per pixel and they need to be saved as the value for that pixel. A pixel of a digital image can thus be described as a value representing these three colors. The scheme of things is called RGB model or red, green, blue color model. Note we are discussing just one of the many color systems or models in existence and deliberately ignoring others that exist except one called grayscale. So in a color digital image, a pixel is made up of three channels or three numbers representing it for each of the primary colors. There also exists a single channel version called grayscale, which is black and white image. It requires just one value to represent pixel intensity or amount of light between zero and one, which are basically percentages of white. This is all what is needed for grayscale. Typically, just one or two bytes are required to store the possible values. For those who don't know about binary numbers, one byte or eight bits can contain up to 256 values, while two bytes can contain up to 65,536 values. Number of bits used to indicate color of a single pixel are known as color depth. Colors also have a concept of depth, and for the RGB image, each pixel store a value of corresponding red, green, and blue intensity values. While color depth can vary across application, HTML has standardized use of 8 bits per channel, so each color can be represented by three numeric values between 0 and 255. Total size required for an HTML pixel is thus 24 bits. You can define each color in CSS as RGB 000 for black, and 255, 255, 255 for white, or 255, for red. This allows for 16 million total colors to be used. It is also called true color. And it is not just an HTML phenomenon. This is the term used across the display world, like say in your operating system. Also note, human eye is capable of discriminating up to 10 million colors only. Note there also exists an RGBA color model where A stands for opacity or transparency value. Final result is a 32-bit color where fourth channel is causing color to be totally invisible or transparent with value 0 to fully visible at value 1 with intermediate values dictating semi-transparent color behavior. All right, that pretty much summed up the basics of the display world. In the next video, we shall discuss other advanced topics like refresh rate, frame rate, display adopters, screen orientation, etc. So stay tuned. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.